Hello and welcome to episode 36. 36 of my blind let's play of The Witness. I. <laughs> oh man, I dropped my bagel and got a bunch of uh, cream cheese inside of my, uh, my D pad on my controller this morning. So I cleaned it out as best I could. Hopefully, this game is compatible with a little bit of cream cheese. Um. God, you know, I just, I have a ton more comments, so, like, I'm gonna go back and, uh, read, uh, read more comments that you guys have been leaving. I really appreciate it, guys. Uh, this, this might end up being just another comment-oriented episode, so we'll see. I think I have a bunch, though. Let's see, let's see. Uh, yeah, so somebody named Hellfish9 commented on it, uh, episode 2 and said the video starts at 9.48, which I greatly appreciate since that was the episode when I went on a political rant right at the beginning of the episode. So that's very much appreciated and <laughs> helpful. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. God, there's a lot of comments. This is crazy. Okay. Chow3948 says on part three, best game ever made. I mean... Yeah, fair enough. I'm assuming he's talking about The Witness, unless I mentioned some other game while I was playing. Um, and then also in episode 3, somebody named Fogmeister apparently has started watching. Uh, one key, Two comments he left. One key piece of advice I would give. If you find yourself brute forcing, stop. Look around the puzzle. Find what it's trying to teach you. Yes, that is generally good advice. I will reply back saying... Absolutely. Nine times out of ten, I take that approach. But sometimes my mind is just totally blanking. Okay, Fogmeister also says... The key to the tree panels... What was I doing with tree panels only in episode 3? Is to look at the missing branches. Each tree has some branches missing and they're matched on the panel. So the turned around tree has a branch missing, but it's on the opposite side of the panel. That leads to the answer to the last tree panel too. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I believe I did figure that out eventually. So let us continue here. This is like a big jump up in uh, interaction compared to my like my Dark Souls 3 and my Final Fantasy 7 and my Elden Ring Let's Plays. Um, yeah, this, this game... I mean, obviously people are just super into seeing someone else play through this game blind. Um, so it just happened to work out for me that I really wanted to play this game. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are interested in watching someone play through it. So that is excellent. Where the hell is the next comment, though? Hmm. Okay. Chris cites on part thirty two. Okay. About the pillars. What pillars? So kind of spoiler, if you want to look the idea yourself first, so I'm letting a space here. Pill okay, yeah. Uh, okay, so this is about the black pillars. I'll, I'll accept it. I'll accept it at this point now that I'm pretty close to the end of the game. Pillars are in the general geographic location, which I had guessed, and also show an approximate direction. He says, although for some I was wondering why they were on one face and not another. Okay, so my guesses were kind of true. The pillars are in the general geographic proximity of the, the sparkle puzzles that they depict. And also the, the side of the pillar that it's on kind of gives you a direction. Well, that's awesome. I mean, that I could have figured out by a little bit of trial and error by just going and checking that out. So so that's cool. You, you and Josh have kind of hinted me towards that understanding, but... That's all good. That's another one by Chris Seitz. Um, Chris Seitz says, so this is on a different subject. This Now we're getting on to religion based on what I was saying, based on what 
Josh Payne was saying. So Chris Seitz says, speaking of Christianity converting pagans all those years ago, that was a kind of we'll bring you our peaceful ways by force. Uh, another thing I'm is I'm technically Christian, haven't been to church since my own conformation. I don't know what a conformation is. Maybe you meant confirmation? I know there are certain technical terms in certain religions. I don't necessarily know them all. Uh, he says, but I still believe religion shouldn't just shouldn't be in politics at all, if possible. Not Christianity, nor Islam, or Judaism. Religion and state should say, stay separated. Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting and deep subject, for sure. Um, speaking of Christianity... So, going back to the first thing you said there, Chris. Speaking of Christianity converting pagans, and it being like, a, you know, we're, we're going to bring you a peace by force. <laughs> I mean, that is a funny thing to say. Um... You know, I wasn't around back then. Let, let me just think of how I think about it. Like, were the pagans peaceful, though? And, like, I, like specifically, like, when the, Christ was around, whoever that guy really was. I mean, I don't think he was doing much of anything by force. He was, like, uh, sometimes retaliating against people in forceful ways. But, it, like, in the initial conception of that specific guy going around and uh, trying to help people to see a more rational, uh, loving way to live. I mean, I don't think he was bringing anything by force. Obviously, over time, you know, armies developed and all these factions grew up. And I'm sure even in the the first days after christ got crucified i'm sure there were various factions all claiming to be the true followers of christ and probably some of them formed organized religions and others just sort of you know became people just kind of traveling around telling tales so yeah it's all very interesting uh, as far as keeping religion and state separated um god that's complicated i i feel that no particular religion should get a special like say like or should get a special protection or a, or a, a special um like denigration particularly like someone for being part of a religion shouldn't have preference or hindrance in the law i can certainly say that much um but when you get into religion and state being separated, that's when, like, I'm sure there are a lot of Christian people that hear that and say, well, we wouldn't even have these laws that protect people um, if it wasn't for Christianity saying that we should have those laws. So, you know, that that's a debate that's probably a bit um, not over my head, but uh, I don't know that I've spent enough time thinking about that to give an ultra strong opinion other than everything I just said there. Um, let's keep this camera moving so I don't lose oh, a little bit of, uh, oh, wow, it doesn't like me looking up at the ceiling. Wow. No biggie. Um, wish I had a better, whoopsies, wish I had a better, uh, background for you guys to look at while I'm saying this, but no big deal. We'll just look at the inside of this facility. Ha, 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 David Phillips. Uh, oh yeah, he, okay, that's uh, just kind of a little reply to a comment I left him. Uh, Josh Payne on episode 32 says, I enjoyed Sea of Stars quite a bit for a while. Um, yeah, so Sea of Stars was kind of the spiritual successor or or related game to the messenger that we were all talking about i don't even know how we got on that subject other than probably just talking about um popular and high quality indie games like the witness um josh continues i would still probably enjoy finishing it i guess the problem for me is that the gameplay was too slow to evolve after 12 hours of play i was using 80 percent the same abilities as after four hours of play i could see that being an issue New areas continued to be fun because the gameplay is basically fun, but also more of the same each time, even quite far in. If anyone has finished it, let me know if you feel that this changes eventually. That's cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to hear that as well. Josh Payne uh, continues, My personal recommendation for your next game to stream after The Witness, if you haven't played it yet, is the remake of Riven. So Riven was the sequel to Myst, right? And so you're saying they've made a remake that is 
I guess, available on PS4. I mean, I will definitely keep that in mind. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, I've never played through Mist or Riven, or I think they even made a Mist 3, possibly. Um, I remember as a kid watching friends play Mist, and it just seemed really, really cool. And I know it's like... Mist is kind of like the 90s version of The Witness, as far as I know. It's literally like an island, mysterious island with a bunch of puzzles to solve, and you eventually uncover some mystery. Um, so... Yeah, I don't know that I will get to Riven next, but um, that certainly puts it on my radar. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm tempted to start Googling it right now, but I'll keep it in mind and I'll just find out about the remake of it and if it's available to me and whatnot. So I appreciate that. What else have we got here? A lot, a lot of comments. Uh, Josh Payne, also on episode 32, says, You should watch Summoning Salt's video about Tetris sometimes. So we got onto Summoning Salt because uh, I think I was talking about speedrunning at some point, and Summoning Salt is a popular speedrunner. Um, Josh continues, It's hard to believe that a two-hour video about Tetris is going to be compelling and interesting throughout its entire length, but this video is 100% exactly that. Um, I believe it. I mean, I sometimes enjoy watching competitive Tetris videos. I don't know if you guys get into all that. There are the the various ways of playing NES Tetris. Like, uh, I can't remember what the original way of playing is called. Maybe just like, I can't remember what it's called. But the basically just like, you know, moving up, down, left, right with the D-pad. Um, just with your thumb on it. And then... Oh, uh, what was the next H hyper tapping was the next way where people like got really good at just like mashing the d-pad directions or no the the default way of playing is if you want to move your piece across the field either left or right is you hold left or right and it moves it across the field at a certain fairly quick rate but then the second superior way of playing was called hyper tapping where you mash the d-pad to get the pieces across the field and you can you can just make make moves you know laterally across the tetris well quicker that way and eventually the hyper tappers started like winning the world championships over the the people who were using the older way and then now there's an, a way that even beats hyper tapping uh which is fast i believe it's faster and a lot easier once you get used to it called rolling where basically you put your thumb on the d-pad where you know in the direction you want to move in but then you're actually like rolling your fingers across the back of the controller to get multiple like multiple inputs all in a row really quickly um so yeah so i know that much about tetris so i don't doubt that a two-hour tetris video by summoning salt could be quite entertaining i don't know what his video exactly would be about is it like i think summoning salt does world record progressions so it'll show like you know oh here super mario 64 used to take three hours to get through now it takes two and a half now it takes two hours now we're getting through it in five minutes i don't know if that's what that video is but um that's probably a good recommendation if you're into speedrunning and Tetris. Let us continue. Uh, on episode 33, Josh Payne says, I think the shipwreck puzzle is the hardest single puzzle in the entire game. Just really ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it seems a little... A little fucking crazy man I, I don't know what to make of that puzzle uh, he says if you would like for me to confirm for you what types of sounds matter I can that sounds reasonable to me even if it just confirms what you already thought it still leaves you with determining the correct order of the pitches and finding a solution that hits them in that order 100% for sure this is a puzzle I would have never been able to figure out with help personally I'm going to reply on that and say I am open to help with this dastardly puzzle. I think that is reasonable also. Uh, Josh Payne also left another comment on part 33 saying, I think you said earlier about the lake that was in the body, that it was the body of water you were riding the boat in. Not the case. The lake I've been suggesting you look closely at is the one between the quarry and the town. Uh, okay you know what that lake has always stuck out and 
I initially I kind of thought something important would be there, and then eventually I just kind of saw it as like a little like a feature that you just kind of pass by when you go through a bunch of the areas. It's sort of central, um, but I well, I'll even respond here on this comment and say I will take a look. Uh, a closer look. I will take a closer look. I will take a closer look. Uh, yeah, let, let's see what else we got here. I don't know if I should come up out of this um, dungeon here and clean up some stuff before finishing the game down here. I, I don't really know. Let me read the rest of the comments here. Okay, uh, in part 34, Josh left four comments, and he kindly numbered them. So, comment number one of four, Josh says, Since you are two puzzles away from getting the town laser, it would be worth it. Once you finish what you're currently doing in the mountain, go back and get the last labor laser, even if it is when, with help, so as to unlock the post-endgame content. Oh, really? Okay, that's a good hint that... I'm going to beat the game in here, but then there's more content if I light up all the lasers. Fair enough. Uh, maybe you'll be content with just beating the game, but I doubt it. Since you said that you have limited time left before you're going to have to take a break from streaming and you'd like to finish the game quickly, I'd like to help you wrap up the town. Fair enough. Uh, comment two. In case you'd rather keep working on those final puzzles on your own, I'll do it as another commentator did earlier and leave some space. Okay. Uh, okay, so comments two, three, and four here are all um, like spoilerish help. So I'm just gonna leave likes and hearts on them, and I will come back to them after I beat this mountain area to help me finish up the town and the shipwreck. So I appreciate that, Josh. Let's continue on with the comments here. Oliver Foggin. Oh, that was Fogmeister. Yes, Foggins. Foggins. <laughs> That's a funny name, Oliver Foggin. Uh, that reminds me of Oliver Twist and uh, Fagin. Wasn't there a character named Fagin? Uh, anyway, Oliver Foggin. That's funny. Uh, hmm, 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 hmm. And. Josh Payne, only 16 minutes ago on part 35, says, You were correct when you were thinking that unlocking the mountain is a matter of getting ev any seven of the 11 possible lasers. Right, makes sense. So far, you have completed 10 out of 11 with some hints. Not too bad. If you had been determined to have no hints, turning off comments, etc., I'm sure you still would have been able to get to seven lasers. I agree. So very similar to the Mario 64 70 stars thing, like we were saying earlier, as unlocking the mountain opens the path to the first ending for the game oh multiple endings really very very interesting okay cool excellent that was only 18 minutes but i feel like since all i've been doing during this episode is uh reading comments and replying on that i think it's better if i just end this episode here move on to episode 37 and then start with the gameplay so Thank you very much for, uh, you know, hanging out with me as part of this Let's Play. I really appreciate all your comments. Uh, I hope that you continue to enjoy the Let's Play. I'm th th This uh, Let's Play has the most views and comments by far out of, out of anyone I've done so far. So that's great. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Really appreciate it. Constructive criticism, compliments, all welcome. Please no spoilers for the game unless they're extremely well marked, especially in a game like this that is so easily uh, spoiled and like puzzle solving is like the entire name of the game. Um, yeah, that that's about it, really. I hope you're having a good day. I will see you in episode 37 very soon, and we will... Hopefully, possibly even today, conclude the mystery of Witness Island. All right, see ya.